Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench, we have a data precision frequency counter. I haven't even plugged this thing in, turn this on. Hopefully we can restore this and get it going for the lab if we can. I'm planning on hooking this up to my 7603 and giving it a dedicated frequency counter to add some functionality to the scope. Since still the 7603 for general purpose is one of my daily drivers and I really like it. Visual inspection on this, very dusty, hasn't been plugged in in a while. So we're gonna give it a good clean. And also I'm gonna remove this handle if I can. I'm not a huge fan of handles on tech gear. I understand some of the portable stuff it should be, but it makes, if, if I put it this way, it makes stacking something on top of it hard. If I put it on the bottom, it makes stacking something, it makes it sitting on top of something else not easy. So, we're going to see what we can do there. This particular one is a little bit more modern, but it does have an external uh, clock input. So I am hoping to use the external input on this and get it on the rubidium as well. So we'll have a very nice stable clock on this that we can use to take frequency measurements from the 7603. So with that being said, I want to get this opened up first before we plug it in because this has not been plugged in for a while, so I want to get some I want to get some eyes in there and just make sure we don't have any roasted caps or anything in the power supply or anything of that nature. So looks like a couple of screws in the top will come off, so we'll do that right now. Well, there is really not much going on in here. We have a big bulk filter cap, uh, Illinois capacitor. We got a couple more over here. Uh, I do have a switch that we'll clean up in the front, and then we have a trigger potentiometer over here, this variable capacitor hiding behind the power transformer. This variable cap right here is definitely going to be tuning that crystal. So here's our switch for the internal and external. So the external comes, uh, the red wire is where the frequency gets dumped in to the circuit. So it looks like uh, if you do end up with one of these without the external, you just pull this resistor off, put the switch in, and then it's good to go. Uh, let's see. 74 series logic, it looks like. Yeah, 76, 74, 72. Yeah, everything looks relatively straightforward. I'm going to pop the handle off of this so I can uh, take the handle off. We'll deal with that here in a minute. And then... Uh, That'll be nice. Okay, I've got the handle off and it was just a bit of C-clips and the whole thing popped off. So this is gonna look a lot better already. Power transformer, the operating voltage is set by these two gray twisted wires. On lugs one and four makes it for 115 volt. So one and four, we have 115 volt. And if we need to do 230, it would be one and three. Okay, I checked the data sheet of the counter, and this is actually a 100 megahertz counter, so this is perfect for me to couple with the 7603, that being a 100 megahertz scope. So let's get the bottom off of this, and we'll get some caps replaced. And get this thing fired up, see if it counts something. Well, I had a feeling we'd find something, and this sure didn't disappoint. I popped this first cap off, which is a... What is this thing? A uh, thousand microfarad, 16 volt, and we are we have the start of some damage. So I'm gonna have to clean this really well, get all of this off the board, and make sure we don't have uh, ongoing issues. But that would have started to rot the board if I had if I had used this without doing this service. So good thing we're getting in here and getting this done. I'll get these other two replaced and cleaned up. It's just isopropyl alcohol, nothing, not a big deal. But, uh, yeah, glad we're doing it. Okay, I've gotten the bulk caps replaced with long life, high hour, high temp caps. And it's a good thing I did. I did find board damage under all three of these. So uh, it's, it's a real good thing we're doing this service now because it was going to get bad shortly. Uh, next up is cleaning up these switches. This actually has the same switch packs that that uh, Heath kit scope that I worked on has. So we'll get these switch packs cleaned, clean up this uh, trigger one too, 
and then uh, we'll put some signal in front end and see if it counts. Okay, I have the switch pack cleaned up, and I have cleaned all the controls, got everything plugged in. We have this set to frequency, and let's see if we get life. Well, that's looking a lot better. And we're gating, so that's working. Uh, let's see if... Let's see if we can... Uh, Read some signal. I do have the clock set to internal reference, so I do not expect this to be correct by any stretch of the imagination. But I have it 2 volts peak to peak at 10 megahertz. Kick this on. Let's see what happens. It was overflowing because I had the uh, speed too long. So it's triggering fine. Uh, the crystal's running a little hot right now, which is totally okay. Uh, yeah, that overflowed. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll tighten it up on there, and then we'll... Drop it down and tighten it up some more. The uh, function generator's got plenty of plenty of um, accuracy for this frequency counter. So we're just gonna let this let this burn for a while on the bench. I want the crystal to get nice and warm before I put the um, before I adjust that tuning capacitor, the tuning capacitor, and then uh, I also want to see. I also need to look up the manual and figure out what the external reference for this wants to be. Hopefully it's 5 or 10 megahertz. If it's 1 megahertz, we'll have to figure something out. But all doable. So what we've got going on right now is I'm trying to get the external uh, working on the Stanford Research on the Rubidium. But what I've got is I've got an amplitude problem. As you can see, we're gating here. And... We're not gating, or er, uh, and we have a 4.5 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal hooked up to, and I'm and I'm reading this off the switch where it feeds into the board. So everything's working on the external. We have a 10 megahertz sine wave being referenced to a 10 megahertz square wave on the same device, backed up by the rubidium. So I'd expect 10 megahertz even, and it's going to sit here all day and not have a problem. If I switch back to the internal clock, we're off. And you can see it's got a pulse train on the internal clock. Not a big deal. Um, and we're running about eh, 4 volts. So it needs about 4 volts of signal to get the uh, chips excited to get them to do what they're doing, what they're supposed to do. So if I hook this up to the rubidium, we will see... All right here we have oh about two volts peak to peak so we're a little light on signal and it's not gating anymore so the clock's not running so what we've got is we've got just an amplitude problem everything chip wise is working uh, I'm gonna hook this up to my GPSDO because I do have a square wave output on the GPSDO. If that works, great. Uh, it won't have as precise a clock on the rubidium, but it's it's here. If that doesn't work, I may have to design a board to get a little bit of amplification uh, and some square waves out based on probably just a uh, Schmidt trigger inverter. Run a couple of uh, run the input into a Schmidt and. Um, then just feed it into the clock. But let's see if we can not have to do that, and we'll go from there. Well, it turns out the uh, chips just want a fast edge to find. This is running at 2 volts. Um, 2 volts peak to peak, and I have a nice square wave out, but we are gating as well, and we're at 10 megahertz. So I could run the external clock off the GPSDO directly. I think we're going to do that. Um, it's, it is going to need a termination because without the 50 ohm terminator, 
even though I got more amplitude, there was some horrific ringing on it. So, yeah, that'll keep this nice and stable over time. Now, accuracy-wise, I did do a uh, video on, or I've done a couple videos now on how GPSDOs kind of wander around a little bit and things like that. For this particular counter, given the fact that it's 100 megahertz, it has absolutely nothing to do with that. They, they can wander around all day, and this isn't this isn't going to notice, and it's not going to affect the, the measurements at all. Everything's working. That'll be a game plan, and yeah, I'll have to uh, I'll have to sacrifice two BNC cables to it permanently. One to hook up the uh, 7603 to the front end, and the other to hook up to the uh, GPSDO. But I'm still gonna use the internal clock, and we're gonna adjust that. I just need to let it burn in for a little while longer, and then we will go. Uh, we'll tweak it to 10 megahertz, and then it'll be good to go. Should be enough warm-up time to do this crystal. So, without getting shocked. Yeah, well, that is what that does. Can't ask for better than that. So that is actually the only adjustment in this unit. So the alignment for this frequency counter is rather short. And with the cover back on, everything's good to go. Now, let's see if this is sensitive enough to register some changes. This is how sensitive some of these crystals are to environment. Nope, not enough digits in this one. Okay. If you get a 13-digit, 12 or 13-digit frequency counter and you flip it over like that, you'll actually see a change if it doesn't have the high stability time base. Okay, here's kind of the way I envision using this here in the lab. I'm going to have to re-set re, uh, up the bench to make room because I'm out of room on top of the 7603. But I don't have any signal running into the 7603 at the moment but I do have this cable hooked up to the vertical out on the back of the scope. So if I turn some signal on, you'll see we have waveform and we have immediate counts. So what this is doing, and this is reading in kilohertz, by the way, and we're actually still on the internal time base. I can kick that over to the external, make it more accurate, which is fine. Not too bad. So the neat part about this is it uses the front end as a buffer. So I have the front end attenuator, I see the display, and I get counts from the scope. And I can also do this at the very, very low end. So where, because it's a uh, buffered output, if I say go to amplitude 50 millivolts, I lose the counter. And this is actually lower than the counter can count anyway. But if I get scope signal, I can count I can get counts again at using the amplification factors of the scope. Obviously this plugin's having some issues. I'm gonna have to look at that. I don't know if that's one I've fixed so far yet or not. I have a bunch of 7A18s, so the uh, attenuator probably needs to be exercised. But, so, I've got counts um, from the scope, and it doesn't matter what I set the time base to. I still have counting using the front end of the scope as a buffer. So, that's the plan. Now, what's going to happen in the lab is the 7510 is going to move, and this is probably going to go on top of this DM6500. I use the DM6500 as my everyday meter, I do not use the 7510 near as much as the 6500. 
So the 7510 may actually go on top of the 2450 or something from there. We'll have to see. But everything is working as I'd expect. I can even crank this up. No changes to the, uh, oh, if I change the frequency. Let's do frequency 100 kilohertz. So I can't even see what's going on on the scope, but this is still telling me I have a 100 kilohertz signal. So very useful and a neat way you can use the vertical output port on your scope to get a little bit more data out of things. But now I don't need to rely on the accuracy of the tune time base for frequency measurements because I have a GPSDO time base into a counter that's reading what the scope does. So that, that'll tighten up my time measurements quite a bit for using this as my daily driver scope. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at the precision or data precision frequency counter repair and adding it to the uh, 7603 for the lab. As always, I read all the comments on all the videos. So if you have any questions, comments, would like to see some videos made, leave me a message in the, in the comment section below. As always, more is always on the way, and I will see everybody in the next video.